Okay, first take. Did it work? Hello, my name is James. <laughs> it work. Yay! Oh God, I feel lightheaded. <laughs> I feel lightheaded. Oh crap. Yeah, straight A student, but I'm friends with the cool kids Following the rules and the rubric Freestyle on the bus and it's too lit Everybody like, hold oh, down, who's this? Who's this? Raising the stakes like Have you ever asked yourself, what is it like to be on a railroad? What is it like to work on a railroad? And what does it has to offer in order for us to learn about its history? Today, ladies and gentlemen, we are going to talk about the unsolved mystery of the FJNG, also known as the Fonda, Johnstown, and Glovisville Railroad. Hope you guys enjoyed today's video, and do not forget to hit the like button, subscribe, and do not forget to leave my notifications on so you guys won't miss any single updates on these videos that I upload. Let's get started. We are going back to 1866 where all of this started. Okay guys, so the, the location where we at, where this railroad used to be constructed back in the 1867, uh, before, of course, before crisis came, uh, <laughs> I'm stupid. I don't. I don't know that much uh, about history. Why? 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 Oh God! Why? Anyways, and so this history, we're gonna talk about it. I've noticed like some good things. I've done more research on it. I don't really know what happened to this railroad and why did it shut down. But today we are going to figure out the mystery and see, you know, what this railroad has. The Fonda Johnstown and Gloversville Railroad was formed in 1867, and the first train over the road arrived in Gloversville, New York in November of 1870. Local leaders predicted major benefits to having a railroad that connects to the New York Century and Hudson River Railroad in Fonda, New York. Like many railroads, the FJNG faced many challenges after 1920, but operated for 54 years when it was sold to the Delaware and Old Sago Railroad. Before the Gloversville Railroad started to expand, their lines were pretty small back in those days. At that time, they were pretty much horses which they used to use as transportation before steam was even a thing. The railroad was able to afford one steam locomotive. At the time, there wasn't that much money to get another steam locomotive, so they would have to call other railways in order to get the help that they need. And to put it like this, steam wasn't the only operation there was. There was also electricity, so they had to use electric trams in order for people to go to work and come home from work. That's until the diesel started to take over. The railway decided to purchase one diesel locomotive to replace steam, and because of that one of that steam locomotive was sadly scrapped. And some of them were even purchased to other different railways, and others were sadly scrapped. The railway board decided to purchase more diesels after the first one was a great success. From there on, more diesels took over the railroad, even trams as well. So steam was no longer a thing. After the railroad was torn apart, Dr. Grohman visited the railroad in 1950. The railroad was selling some equipments and Dr. Grohman decided to purchase a rolling stock a caboose. And so it was purchased and added to the growing list of equipment at Rail City Museum. So this caboose has been saved from the railroad after being left behind. Good thing it's been saved from being abandoned and also being torched at the scrapyards. 
After many years the railroad has been taken down, there's only a boxcar as a display for the railroad's history. There's also a plaque, so if you want to go ahead, pause the video, and read it of its history, you could go ahead and pause the video. There shows more detail, more information that you guys would want to know. And of course, since I live in Gloversville, there's a museum that's not so far away. It's only 7 minutes to 9 minutes away. I never went to this museum before, but I did heard some rumors about it. And not gonna lie, they even said that this museum is actually haunted. So if one day I ever go in there, I would like to see one of the railroad stuff, which they have a display. And not to mention, but they also have their own HO scale layout. I would like to see this in person, and if I do, you already know what's gonna happen. I'm bringing my models. I really can't believe I'm standing in front of it for the first time. Hey, yo, what's up, bro? So next to Domino's Pizza, there's a store called Collector's Connection, which used to be a hobby train shop. Looks like the store has not been used in years, and it's all dirty. There were G-Scale models, Lionel models, any models that you can imagine. There's also another location which is called The Caboose. At first, I thought it was another train shop, but no, it, it's just the bar. Alright guys, so today is day second of the rail trail. We are actually going there right now. And uh, people are like, oh look, <laughs> he's a YouTuber. And I'm like, okay, and thank you, next. Tico, what's up? You did said that the trail that we were just talking about, mm -hmm. you said that that leads to the, uh, where does it lead to? It leads to Fonda, here, Gloversville, and Johnstown. All right, so Johnstown is like a little farther, like, let's say, how long does it take, like, going on trail? Like, on trail, I'd say 30 minutes, maybe on trail. I'm not really sure, I've never tried it before. Trail for 30 minutes, okay, that's not bad, not bad at all. All of this leads, at, like, these, these trails used to be uh, shorter lines that they used back in the 1800s, and like basically people would like work on these railroads to like repair tracks. They would actually like be there for one another. They would always, like sometimes these locomotives, they always come through here. I think this line before all of this was constructed, I think this used to be like the entrance of Gloversville. So like I said, these trails lead more further. I've never like gone that far before. Since it's a little early, then today could be the moment that we could just keep going forward and we're gonna see like how far could we make it Okay, so guys, there is a problem that we have during this history. My nephew comes and says, hey, Uncle Anthony, you were missing a detail. And I was like, what detail? And he was saying, oh, that a fire happened back in 1967. So I was like, okay, let me just go and search for that. So basically in 1967, there was a fire that happened, well, not too long ago, but here's something that I couldn't find. Well, recently I've just been looking and searching for like more details about this fire because I didn't know. I searched for the Fonda, Johnstown and Gloversville fire back in 1967. Honestly, th there's nothing. There's nothing that 
that says about the fire, like what happened to it, and how did it cause this chain reaction. I thought I could look for like more details about it, but I can't find nothing actually. They're showing pictures about what happened to some fires from this year, from last year, and it, it doesn't add up, it doesn't make sense. That I kind of failed. I just hope that this history uh, shows like what it has. So anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. Thank you so much for watching. If you want to see more history on railroading, make sure you guys hit the like button, subscribe, and do not forget to hit my notifications on so you guys won't miss every single video, every single updates on this channel. So thank you guys so much for watching. And as always, I will see y'all my creation family in the next video. Bye everyone. Take care and God bless you. Whisper came. Are you Sir Topham Hatt's engine? I am proud of it. Well, I'm Oliver.